constituents of the theory may be complicated, like in the case of chemical reactions. A huge number of molecules are frequently involved thousands of molecules around any pair of reactants and so on. So in a way, if you want to describe how every atom moved, you'd need thousands of coordinates to describe the instantaneous position. But as you may know, that chemists and physicists have developed ways of handling systems, liquids, solids, gases, solutions, using what's called statistical mechanics, which takes their bulk properties <clears throat> and expresses it in terms of the individual molecular properties using a technique, or a whole field actually, that's called statistical mechanics. And it was developed around, the, around 1900 or so, or brought to fruition then. And so if one wanted to treat <coughs> this these experiments in full detail, one might have thousands of positions of atoms and so on to, to specify. But actually when you measure, you don't measure at that level of detail. So you employ a theory which averages over all that. And we were able to do that in a special way that permitted us, instead of using thousands of coordinates, to depict what's happening in terms of one coordinate. And that was a key part of the theory that we gave in 1960, actually. And these are examples of what came out. That in this statistical mechanics that, that is used to interpret the motion, the combined motion of many molecules, you have something called energy, you have something called entropy, you have something called free energy, and that's a, the free energy is sort of a cardinal thing in chemistry and physics, what have you. And these are plots of free energy against a particular coordinate that characterize the development of the reaction. All of that is technical detail that I'm not trying to go into here. I'm just saying that that is the kind of technical detail that was needed in order to develop the theory. In other words, in developing a theory, you don't just wave your hand. You provide very concrete details and very concrete prescriptions, precise descriptions, if you want to develop a fundamental theory. And that's what was done. Previously, for the course of a chemical reaction, people developed what's called reaction coordinates on how much this bond stretches, how much this bond grows, and you combine both of them, you call a reaction coordinate. But here we had thousands of coordinates involved and it's necessary to develop a new kind of coordinate, which is one of the things we did in our papers at that time. So there's, there's a lot of technical detail that goes into the development of scientific theories. And in turn, they should be reasonably precise and concise that they can make predictions for new experiments. And that happened in this case. This is actually an equation. An equation that before it was in this form was like this and looked terrible. But then by this addition and subtraction, got cancellations, and it came out to be an equation which those of us who are chemists who have been studying equations for a long time would regard as simple. And what it does is it relates the rate, how fast the reaction is, denoted by this K, to various properties, which I won't try to specify, in, in the reaction. And this equation, where I haven't specified the details, made a number of predictions that we wrote about in 1960. Then during the course of the next 25 or so years, those predictions were tested on <clears throat> and compared with experiment, tested by experiment, and in general, uh, they were confirmed. But this equation itself is something that one can use to treat various kinds of systems and make predictions 
about those different